questions 28 to 30. Okay, so this is positive emission tomography, which is indeed used in hospitals along with nuclear magnetic resonance and uh, many other different types of imaging techniques. And it's talking about uh, positrons, and so it defines a positron as E01, which of course, hopefully during your review, you would have learned about this, but it's okay. Yeah, they're giving it to you for free. <laughs> and so it's E01. Now that one is uh, just a positive number, of course. So as opposed to an electron, which is E0 negative 1 uh, in the uh, uh, subscript. So uh, it's just a little interesting as a, as a difference. So anyway, it talks about the isotope is produced uh, in a cyclotron by bombarding oxygen 18 with protons. Oh, distraction, <laughs> because that's not what the next question is about. The question is, which one of the following nuclear reaction represents the emission of positrons from fluorine 18. So we have to start with fluorine 18. We have to have on the other side of the equation a positron. So if you've seen one of these reactions even once, then you know exactly how it works because uh, you just have to make sure it's balanced. And once you've seen one of these reactions even just once, uh, 28 and 20, uh, 30 uh, become really uh, just uh, super easy because you're just making sure that everything is balanced on both sides so you look at the superscripts and then you compare the subscripts and they have to be balanced so let's look at answer choice a in answer choice a on the left side of the equation you see as a sub a superscript uh, you see the number 18 on the right side of the equation you see 18 plus 0 so it's 18 perfect and the subscripts you see the number 9 on the left side of the equation then you see 8 plus 1 on the right side of the equation 8 plus 1 is 9 perfect so that all matches and so yes answer choice A is correct now let's just quickly look at the others uh, answer choice B we have 18 on the left it goes to 18 plus 0 perfect then for the subscripts it has 19 a 9, sorry, on the left, and it goes to 9 plus 1, that's 10. Boo, no good. So answer choice B is not right. Answer choice C, we have 18 in the superscript, and that's going to 18 plus 0, perfect. And then in the subscript, we have 9, and it's going to 10 plus 1, that's 11. No, it doesn't work. Now, if that was an electron, and it was E negative 1 in the subscript, then it would work. Uh, but it's a positron, so it doesn't work. So D, looking at D, 18 in the superscript, and then it goes to 17 plus 0. Nope, doesn't work. And in the subscript, 9 is going to 10 plus 1. That's 11. No, that doesn't work either. So only answer choice A makes sense for question 28. And now looking at question 29. So you uh, hear about the SI unit, which is the gray. And, uh, of course, if you've done some of the HEAPS exams, you would have seen the gray showing up in a few different uh, uh, exams. Uh, but nonetheless, even if you're seeing it for the first time, it doesn't matter. It's just a matter of reasoning. You're told that a gray is a joule per kilogram. And so now what information are you given? Okay. Average. So this is dimensional analysis, by the way, and that's covered in GAMSAT Math 2.2. And so dimensional analysis is just being very careful with your units, and then magic can happen as long as you're careful with your units. So um, the average energy from a single annihilation is approximately 10 to the minus 13 joules. Let's transfer that information into math. So that means that uh, we have 10 to the minus 13 uh, joules, always being careful with the units, uh, per annihilation. That's the, what it means mathematically that the average energy from a single annihilation is approximately 10 to the minus 13 joules. So 10 to the minus 13 joules per annihilation. And there's an average of 10 to the 9 annihilations per second. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this by 10 to the 9, uh, 9 annihilations per second. Why? <laughs> you know. Good question. Okay, so uh, the reason I'm doing this is that I know how many uh, joules there are per annihilation. I know how many annihilations per second. I can cancel annihilations, and that's why I'm multiplying. I'm not dividing. I am not uh, taking a square root. <laughs> um, I'm multiplying these things with the purpose of removing annihilations. W why, again, <laughs> what's the long-term plan? 
The long-term plan is grays because all the answers are in grays. So I know I need to get grays. I know gray is a joule per kilogram. I know I need joules because the question stem gave me how many kilograms there are. So it's 60 kilograms. This is the uh, weight of the person or the mass of the person to be more specific. So I know the mass. I know the kilograms. I need to get joules. Joules is attached to annihilations. I need to remove that attachment. I can attach it to seconds by removing annihilation. I attach it to seconds and I know I've been given minutes. So if I've given minutes, I can I can now get joules and then I can use that over the kilograms. So that's the purpose is looking at the uh, answer choices. What units do I need in the end? And then finding uh, just a dimensional analysis, being able to convert uh, things along the way in order to get to the right uh, answer choice. So here we go. i um, going to now change because I have annihilation per second. I'm going to have to get that into minutes because I know I have 20 minutes. So I know that there's 60 seconds in one minute. So I'll write it like that. Please don't get into the habit of just telling yourself multiply by 60, multiply by 24. Always use the units. Acer will set a trap for you <laughs> so that you think it's multiplied by 60, but you should have divided by 60. And how would you know? You would know by being careful with the units and always writing true statements. Because I know this is the number one. This is the number one. 60 seconds is one minute. So I can write it 60 seconds over a minute, or I can write it one minute over 60 seconds, depending on my need. And so my need is to cross out seconds. So I'm writing it this way. And then, of course, I can multiply this by 20 minutes. And, th and now here comes the magic. The magic is minutes cancel, seconds cancel, annihilations cancel. And so I end up with just joules. And so now with the joules, I can just divide by kilograms, and then I have my grays. So this is called dimensional analysis. Just paying very careful uh, attention to units. You can see how that's set up in uh, GEMSAT Math 2.2, and uh, and you'll see it throughout the HEAPS exams, many uh, instances of this, and we'll do it again and again during this exam, the pink booklet, because um, uh, dimensional analysis is so important to ACER. And by the way, it's very important to your patients one day as well to make sure that you calculate properly the doses that in particular in pediatrics, in neonatology, in, in for young people to make sure that you give them the adequate, uh, the proper dose and the adequate dose. Uh, both things are, are equally important. Okay, so uh, now it's just the numbers and the numbers is the easiest part. Of course, uh, wh what do we have here? I have uh, 60 times 20, so 60 times 20, so that's uh, 1,200. And I have uh, uh, 10 to the minus 13 times 10 to the minus 9, that's 10 to the minus 4. So I have times 10 to the minus uh, 4. So, and then, uh, so that's the joules. And then I'm going to divide this by uh, 60 kilograms in order to get um, uh, to the grays. And that would be equal to the grays because it's joules per kilogram. So um, I have one zero that I'll remove there. I have a six uh, that becomes a two. So I have 20 times 10 to the minus four grays. So that's 20 times 10 to the minus four. And that is a gray. So then minus four, it's like I go one, two, three, four. So that's point zero zero two grays. That's actually 1, 2, 3, 10 to the minus 3, 2 times 10 to the minus 3. I could have put it that way, which means that it's 2 milligrays. There you go. You didn't think you would be saying a word like that today. A milligray. And yes, you should know that because uh, you know all the prefixes of SI units, and therefore this uh, must be 2 milligrays, but it's okay. They put it as 0 0.02 grays, and so 29, the answer is D. And now moving on to question uh, 30, which is another super easy one, because we're just looking for balance. And so for answer choice A, uh, again, in the superscripts, we have 18 plus 1, that's 19, going to 18 plus 0, so it doesn't work. Subscripts, 
also don't work. We have 8 plus 1 going to 9 plus 1, so that's 9 going to 10. doesn't work. So answer choice A is not true. Uh, answer choice B, we have 18 plus 1, that's 19 going to 18 plus 0. Nope. And uh, 8 plus 1 for the subscripts going to 9 minus 1, so that's uh, 9 going to 8. Nope, still doesn't work. <laughs> that's B, doesn't work for either the superscript or the subscript. And then 30C, we have 18 plus 1 going to 18 plus 1. Oh, that worked uh, first time uh, so far. And then C, subscript, uh, 8 plus 1 going to 9 plus 1. Bah, doesn't work. So that's uh, 9 going to 10. That doesn't work. And then uh, as a choice D, we have 18 plus 1 going to 18 plus 1. Bingo. And then we have 8 plus 1 going to 9 plus 0. There we go. We've got the, both the superscript and the subscript working. And so answer choice D is correct. And they could have made it more complicated, a lot more complicated, to force you to understand uh, what the symbols are for a neutron or for an electron. Uh, you see an electron in answer choice B at the end of there. You also see a, a positron in at the end of answer choice A, and then at the end of answer choice D, which was the correct answer, you have a um, neutron that is being produced. Uh, that's the symbol N. But they're not dealing with any of that. They're just trying to see your reasoning. Uh, for those of you who have not seen these types of reactions, uh, just to make sure that you can balance them on both sides. And the most exciting part, of course, was question 29, which allowed you to use your dimensional analysis skills. And then uh, online, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, you can go to GAMSAT Math 2.2 for um, dimensional analysis, and then uh, physics 12.1 to 12.4 for the atom, uh, just to look at these types of reactions that need to be balanced on both sides. And of course, the HEAPS exams, uh, you know, 10 full length exams, uh, which have uh, heaps. <laughs> I'm used to saying tons, but uh, heaps of uh, practice questions and practice exams uh, that cover um, all of this uh, content.